Hey again guys, it is Cigar Butt Day and I bought two companies today and I will tell you about them real quick so that I can get this uh, video done and out. Alright, I just bought 7% of my portfolio in uh, a combination of Liberty Global and Teva. Uh, now, I, if you watch my channel, you know that I've owned Teva in the past um, and I sold it back in, I forgot what month it was, maybe November or October. And I used the proceeds to buy Meta, and now um, Meta's up. I sold half of it, as as you probably know, uh, last month or earlier this month, I think. Um, and I've also sold ASOS, so I had a bunch of cash lying around. So now I'm back in Teva, um, and Liberty Global is a new uh, purchase for me, but I've been watching it for quite a while. Now these are not um, what I consider core holdings. I think that these are cigar butt style investments where, um, maybe not even investments, but purchases where uh, I think there's one last smoke left in them. There's probably a few smokes left in them, as you can see by the chart on Teva particularly. Um, I'm kind of looking for a 30 to 50% upside on each of them. And they both are similar in that they uh, are kind of boring companies with non-cyclical cash flows that are pretty predictable um, and neither of them has uh, high upside in terms of growth. I mean, their upside is probably mid single digits. That's probably the best case scenario for either of them. Um, but with the prospect of a recession uh, or a bigger recession, I should say, um, on the horizons, stuff like this is a, a little bit safer um, because the downside is limited, especially based on the like the uh, price uh, t that we're paying today or that I'm paying. Um, so, okay, I'll, I'll go through each each of them individually really quickly, just high level stuff. I might do more in depth uh, on Liberty Global in another video, but for now, I'm just going to talk about it generally. So Liberty Global is a sort of a broadband and um, fixed sort of broadband fixed Wi-Fi and mobile communications company. And they have some other services on top of that, but basically they supply internet to people um, and uh, and try to bundle both of the services together as their sort of primary uh, package. Um, now this is Seth Klarman's largest position. Uh, so it has a stamp of approval here from him. Um, and as you know, about Seth Klarman, he really focuses on risk, right? That's his primary uh, thing that he focuses on. And, you know, just researching um, uh, Liberty, I, I think that they're a, a fairly low risk company because the cash flows are, are, are quite predictable into the future. Um, this purchase is, I think I bought it at 1680, the A-class shares, and that's maybe 15 to 20 percent below where he purchased so I like um, I do like buying below where uh, gurus that I that I follow uh, bought so that's a that's a, a another uh, tick tick in the uh, positive column um, so the in terms of the class shares I didn't really notice much difference between them except the voting rights and I don't actually care about that because I'm not a uh, I'm not a big shareholder and I'm not a permanent shareholder. So I just bought the A-class shares because they were the cheapest and they seem like they've underperformed the other two uh, over the last few years. So um, no real reason there. Uh, I think that, yeah, like I said, it's low risk. I don't think people are going to stop using the internet anytime soon. I don't see any... Um, big disruptor technologies on the horizon in terms of like how long I'm planning on holding this. Um, and it, where they work is they have operations in the UK, Ireland, uh, Belgium, Netherlands, Slova Slovakia, and Switzerland. They do a lot of mer mergers and acquisitions and they made a recent purchase, which I thought was actually quite good. Let me pull up the name here if I can find it. Um, they exercised their option to buy out the rest of Telenet, which, and that looks like it's at about seven times earnings or 0.8 times sales. So they, they have a history of um, uh, smart mergers and acquisitions. So I think that's sort of in their uh, positive in, in the column for them. Um, but the real reason 
uh, I am buying this is because, well, first, before that, I would say that I just want to say about inflation. Uh, they got hit by inflation in terms of their cost structure the last quarter uh, or, or two, um, but they have a plan to raise all their prices across the board uh, fairly significantly, actually, to offset that. So that shows to me they have pricing power, they have the ability to, to uh, survive and maintain cash flows in an inflationary environment, which is good. Um, Buffett uh, followers will will notice that that is one of his, one of his key criteria: the ability to ability to raise prices. Um, and but again, that's not my main uh, reason for buying. I think that the, the the big obvious thing here is the buybacks. These uh, they they commit to buying at least ten percent of their shares back every year, um, and they are well on the way to doing that. And especially if the stock price stay, stays at this level, I mean, it's at seven point um, seven billion of uh, in market cap, and their expected distributable cash flows are 1.6 billion. So that's about a 20%, um, you know, cash flow to price uh, ratio. And they historically use most of their dis distributable, distributable cash flows, DCF, to, to just do buybacks. So um, they said they're going to do at least 10% this year. And I would expect if the price stays down, they're going to be more like 15, maybe even up to 20% if the stock price stays lower, or goes down more. So there's actually an advantage to the stock price going down with the stock. So in either direction, I'm happy. Uh, the stock price goes down, they buy back more. Ultimately, that's better for me. The stock price goes up, maybe it goes up 30, 40%. I can cash out. Um, you know, at this point, I'm happy with either. So I like that. Um, last year, they did buy back 14% of their shares. So you can see that, like, uh, you know, they could eat half of this company pretty quickly. Um, and the cash flows aren't expected to change too much. They actually might go up because they think there's going to be some synergies from some of the recent acquisitions they made um, that haven't fully materialized yet. So with synergies, I don't really bank on them, but it's sort of a, a bonus upside if it, if it happens. Okay, so that's Liberty Global. Uh, Teva, I mean, you can watch some of my other videos and what I think about it, but basically it's predictable cash flows. They're trading at three times earnings, four and a half times free cash flow, and basically it's recession proof. Um, they've got their uh, big litigation problem in the rearview mirror now, which is a big deal. And it looks like some growth is starting to potentially materialize, which I think might help the stock re-rate. I've been wrong about this before. I thought it should re-rate on the litigation. It didn't. Um, so who knows? Maybe nobody actually cares about this company because um, really what they they basically said that uh, shareholders aren't going to be seeing the cash flows anytime soon. They're going to keep paying their debt down uh, for the next few years. So uh, the dividend won't come back yet. But I do think that at three times earnings, that, that puts a fairly strong floor under the stock. I mean, if you look at the, the chart, it's, it comes down to this level and then it just it, it, it bounces back up because people start saying, well, that's pretty cheap. Um, I assume I assume that's what's happening. Um, but I'm expecting I'm just banking on another one of those bounces. And if it gets back above 10, 11 dollars, uh, I'll probably unload it. Uh, in terms of the actual business, the upside is from some of their uh, proprietary drugs, Ajovi and Ostito. These are the. Um, the main area where they could generate some growth. Um, and those are both doing quite well over the last few years. So we'll see if they get to a, a, a sales level where they really do impact the, uh, the top and bottom lines. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's much to add here, except that, you know, I, these aren't, like I said, these aren't permanent holdings. If I get another, if I see another opportunity like meta last uh, November, where, it was just obviously too cheap. I can sell these two stocks, generate cash to buy some of those things. So this is a, these are kind of a, um, you know, a place just to store cash where I think I'm going to get a decent return if, um, you know, if, if nothing really goes wrong with these companies. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. 
Uh, if you have any comments on either of those stocks, uh, please let me know. But I thought I wanted to get this out quickly so you can see what I'm doing with my uh, excess cash. All right, thanks guys. Have a great day and see you in the next video.